What's up guys, I'm Nico the Camp Wrench, and in this video we are going to talk about camera lenses. Now I remember when I first got into photography, camera lenses were one of the things that took me a while to fully understand, and that's because of all the names and all the uh, numbers and letters that comes when you are reading basically the name of the lens. So when you look at all the lenses out there, it's hard to make the proper choice on, you know, based on what you need and what type of photography that you want to do if you do not know what all of these numbers and all of these letters mean. So in this video, my goal is to help you guys fully understand how to read and how to understand how lenses work so that you guys can make the best purchasing decisions for your, yourselves as well, whether that's your first lens or a lens that you want to add to your kit. So yeah, hope this video helps. If you guys haven't yet, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe if you like this type of content, and my last request is that if you guys have a friend that would benefit from this video as well, be sure to send this video to them so that they uh, understand how lenses work as well. And without talking any further, let's just get straight into the video. The first thing that I wanna look at is actually on the back of the lens, and that is your lens mount. Your lens mount is the part of the lens that attaches directly to your camera and depending on what camera you're using, what brand you're using, these will all have different lens mounts. So the first thing you want to make sure is that you're looking at lenses that fit the camera that you're looking at. In this video, we're going to be looking at Canon cameras and lenses specifically because those are what I own and shoot, but I'm also going to teach you guys how these apply to different camera brands. Now this lens in front of me is an EF mount. This is a Canon full frame mount. So it fits my Canon full frame cameras. There are also specific lenses that use the EF mount, but are for crop sensored cameras. And those are called EFS lenses, just like this one right here. Now my EF full frame camera lenses will actually work on crop sensored cameras, but it doesn't work the other way. The lenses that are built for the smaller sensors do not work for the larger sensors. So that's the first thing you want to look at. You want to make sure that the lenses fit the camera that you have or that you're looking to buy. The next thing you want to look at is the first set of numbers on the lens, and that is your focal length. So in this lens, for example, you can see that it says 35 millimeters. So that means that this is a 35 millimeter lens. And what a focal length is, is the distance of the part of the lens where the light converges all the way up to the image sensor of the camera. Now this is something that you don't really need to know and need to understand. What you need to know are how these numbers work and how they're related to each other. Basically, the smaller the number, the larger your field of view is or the more you can see. And the larger the number is, the more compressed your image will be, the more zoomed in you'll be, and basically the less you'll see in your image. So if you have something like a 24 millimeter lens, that's considered a wide angle lens. And this is typically used for things like landscape photography and such, but focal lengths aren't really restricted to certain types of photography. Now, when you get something in the 40 millimeter to 60 millimeter range, that's considered more of a normal focal length. And that's sort of Similar to what your eye sees to an extent, around 40, 45 is where, what your eye sees. So a little bit longer than that is a little bit closer. And anything above that is considered a telephoto lens. And that, again, is sort of your close-up lens, your portrait lens that really compresses the image, that doesn't give too much context on what's going around in the background. This is used for sports and other things as well. But again, you have to remember that focal length doesn't determine what type of photography that lens is for. These are just sort of general guidelines and what they're commonly used for, but you can use any lens and any focal length for any type of photography. You just have to make it work for yourself. So you might see lenses that have one number, like this one, for example, that says 35 millimeters, and you might have a lens that has a range. This one, for example, says 18 to 135 millimeters. And that is the difference between a prime lens and a zoom lens. Prime lenses are lenses that only have one focal length. So those are lenses that can't zoom essentially. What you see with that focal length or with that lens is what you get. And if you want to zoom in or zoom out, you'll have to either walk back or walk forward with your camera. Whereas with a zoom lens, you have a range of focal lengths. And with zoom lenses, you have zoom rings, 
on the side of your camera that when you turn, your lens will either zoom in or zoom out. So then if you are able to have a zoom lens with lots of focal lengths, you might be wondering why aren't all lenses just zoom lenses instead of just having one focal length. Well, there are drawbacks and there are advantages to each type of lens. One, for example, is that prime lenses are smaller. They can also have larger maximum apertures as compared to your zoom lenses. So you can have lenses that are f1.4, f1.2. And this isn't typically common for zoom lenses. So this lets you have a lot more light come into your lens and it also allows you to have more flexibility with your shallow depth of field if you wish. Those are just some examples of the benefits of prime lenses over zoom lenses. And of course, zoom lenses are good because they're very versatile. You can use them as a wide angle lens to a telephoto lens if you have sort of a you know mid-range 24 to 70, something like that. So there are advantages and disadvantages to both. It really depends on what style of photography you're shooting with and what you're comfortable with. The next set of numbers that you'll need to know are your maximum aperture values. Now this lens, for example, says one is to two, and that's because apertures or f-stops are usually written down as a ratio. But the number that I want you guys to focus on is the one on the right side, and that is two. This is because the maximum aperture of this lens is f2, which is pretty large. And again, this is because this is a prime lens, not a zoom lens. Now, aperture isn't the focus of this video, but as a quick refresher, aperture is basically the physical opening of the lens, and this is measured by the f-stop number, and that is what you see. So this has a maximum aperture or f-stop of two, which means that it can let a lot of light into the camera. And the maximum aperture is the number that people really care about because when you go down to a smaller aperture, most cameras really have that, and it's those maximum apertures that some lenses will have and some lenses won't. So that is something important to know when you're choosing a lens. This lens says the maximum aperture is f2, but some lenses will have a range just like your zoom lenses. And this one, for example, says 3.5 to 5.6, which is common in zoom lenses, especially entry-level zoom lenses. And this, again, notes a range of maximum apertures. This means that this is a variable aperture lens. And with lenses like this, you have different maximum apertures depending on what part of the zoom range you're in. And typically, when you're at the wider end of a zoom range, so when you're all the way back and you can see a lot, you can also let in a little bit more light. And so when you're at the widest setting, the maximum aperture here is f3.5. And when you zoom in, when you're very compressed, your maximum aperture becomes f5.6. Now with more expensive zoom lenses, you have constant apertures as well, like 2.8 zoom lenses. These are a little bit more expensive, a little bit pricier. They're a little bit bigger as well, but that's something you get when you pay extra for a lens. So those two things, your focal length and your aperture are the main two things that you'll find on all lenses. Now there are a bunch of extra things that you'll find on lenses as well, and I'm going to show you guys some of that right now. The first thing is image stabilization, and this is called, again, different things depending on what camera brand you're using. For Nikon, for example, it's called vibration reduction. For Sony, I believe it's called optical steady shot, OSS, and other brands might have a different term for this as well. Now this lens, for example, back to my 35 millimeter F2, it has IS afterwards. And that means that this is in fact a lens with image stabilization. And when you have a lens like this, you typically have a switch on the side of the lens that lets you turn on and off your image stabilization. So when I'm on a tripod, I typically leave the image stabilization off, but when I'm hand holding the camera, I keep that on because what image stabilization does is it reduces camera shake. This is helpful in photography because it lets you use slower shutter speeds when you're shooting things, especially in lower light situations. And it also helps when you're shooting in video because it smoothens out the camera shake that you have from hand holding your camera, makes your footage a lot better. So this is a feature that isn't necessarily the most important thing when it comes to photography, but just know what it's for. And if you like doing a lot of photography where you might have to slow down your shutter speed, but you want to keep things still, 
It's gonna come in handy. It also does wonders when you're shooting in video handheld. That image stabilization will really smoothen out your footage. So after this, a lot of the different technologies that you'll find between different camera brands will vary from each other. So this is something that you might have to do a little bit more research on your own, but we've covered really the basics and the most important things that you'll need to know with lenses. And that is your focal length, your maximum aperture, vibration reduction or image stabilization, your lens mount. So let's go through a couple more things around the lens that I didn't mention previously. So I showed you guys the lens mount in the very back. That is how you attach the lens to your camera. But on your camera, you will also see a bunch of rings. We saw the zoom ring a while ago when I was explaining the zoom lenses, but you also have your manual focus ring. So with a prime lens, for example, the only ring that you will have is your manual focus ring. And in this lens, that is the one here in the front. So when you turn this, you can manually focus your lens. And to disengage your autofocus, you'll typically need to flip a switch from left to right just to turn that off and to make sure your autofocus is off. That's going to activate your manual focus and let you use that nice and smoothly. This is good for a lot of video where you want full control. For photography these days, not so much unless you're using a camera that is made to be manual focus, range finders, for example, that sort of thing. But for a lot of these digital cameras, it's much better to autofocus and use that manual focus only if you absolutely have to. Last but certainly not the least is your front filter thread. And that is this number right here that says 67 millimeters. That means you need a 67 millimeter front filter thread if you wanna use one with this lens. That's very important because sometimes when people have a bunch of lenses, they want lenses with all of the same front filter thread size. Sometimes there are also adapters that you can use. I use adapters just so that I can get all of the same size filter threads, but that also affects the lens caps that you can use, the accessories that you can use, that sort of thing. So that's it guys. I hope this video helped you guys out a lot. Uh, and if it did, make sure again to send it over to a friend that would benefit from this video as well. Like the video, subscribe if you wanna see more content from this channel, and I'll see you guys in the next one.